Hold on. Because today we're going to build a primitive animation using a record player, laser, and 3D printing. It's, it's kind of weird building something primitive with 3D printing and a laser. But anyway, stick around until the end because it's really cool. To start our chat, take a look at this, okay? It's a cage. On the other side, there's a little bird. And now I'm going to wind this thing up. And when I let go, the bird goes into the cage. It might seem like a silly experiment, a child's game. But if it weren't for this, maybe you wouldn't be watching this video right now. The name of this thing is Thaumatrope, and it was invented in 1825. Theoretically, it was an English doctor, but that's kind of controversial. Thauma in Greek means wonder or enchantment and trope comes from to spin. In the end, it's like a magic wheel or something similar. And what's special about this is that we realize that two images merge when they appear fast way. You mix one thing with the other and you kind of start to see just one. It's called persistence of vision and it's directly related to cinema and video. Because if I can do this with two images, what if I put several images in sequence, one after the other, of something moving? We would have a video or a cartoon. That's what a group in Europe began pursuing in the 1800s. They wanted to create instruments, machines that somehow could reproduce movement, show movement. Gradually, this paved the way for cinema and eventually the videos we have today. Returning to 1832, a Belgian physicist and mathematician called Joseph Plateau found a way to place more than two images on this device. He took a disc and made several cuts in it, drew a really crazy animation on this disc, like this, in several places repeated, so that if you looked at the disc in the mirror with the animations facing the mirror through the slits and spun the disc, you could see the animation on the other side. And he named it the Phenakistoscope. The first part of the word also comes from Greek, the word phenakistes, which means to deceive, and scope, which means vision. In other words, it's something that deceives our vision, giving us the illusion of movement. And yes, we've already done this thing on Manual of the World. In a video where I showed how to make a hand spinner with animation, and in the end, I showed these animations from 1830-something. It's really cool to have access to what artists made almost 200 years ago, thinking that a child could watch an animation at that time. And another cool thing about this invention is that a guy from Austria named Simon Stanford invented it at the same time, kind of a year later, without ever knowing it. This again shows there were people observing and studying animation back then. That's when English mathematician William Horner found a way to view the disc without using a mirror. He thought of a slightly neater machine, which also had slits, but it was like a little enclosure on top of the disc with the animation underneath. The name became zoetrope. Zoo means life and trope means to spin. So it's an animated wheel, a wheel where you can see life. And yes, we also made one on Manual of the World with a pencil and a CD. It wasn't perfect, but you can make it at home. It's pretty cool. Much later, French teacher and artist Emile Reynaud further improved this instrument. Instead of putting these slits, he placed some mirrors in the middle and these mirrors reflected the animation. You'd spin this kind of carousel and the mirrors in the center would shift, reflecting new images so you could watch the animation inside. The name of the device ended up being Praxinoscope. You notice they liked strange names, right? It also comes from Greek. Praxis means action and scope means to see. So it's seeing something in action. All these things that I'm showing, they had commercial intentions. People wanted an invention to profit from and exploit it commercially. Like selling toys could appeal to rich people, who buy them to display at home and show friends. It might be at a fair where you buy a ticket to see this in action, which is very cool. He managed to develop this machine in a way that it could project images onto a wall. So you still had that carousel, but it could be illuminated in a way that made it come out of there and go onto a bigger screen. And then you could invite people to watch like an almost movie session. Uh, they ended up calling it Praxinoscope Theater or Optical Theater. And then a guy named Thomas Alva Edison came into play. You've probably heard that name before, right? He was kind of an inventor businessman. He had some really good ideas, gathered a bunch of people to help him out and all, and took part in a lot of important inventions. 
like electric power distribution, the light bulb, the phonograph, and also cinema. One problem with all those machines I mentioned before is that they played really short animations, kind of boring to watch, right? Because how many drawings could you put in there? I don't know, maybe 20, 30? So Thomas Alva Edison invented something like this. You'd take several photos and these photos would stay on a transparent strip. Then you'd put this transparent strip inside a machine that had a light behind it. Then you'd look in the machine and see the transparent strips showing one photo at a time. The name of this was kinetoscope. Kineto comes from movement and skopos means to view, so it was an instrument where we could see the movement. And yes, it was already absurdly similar to cinema, but it had a flaw. You could add many photos, but the video kept looping. You'd watch part of an animation and only one person at a time could view it, like binoculars. But it was a big hit. So, in 1894, a little later, a pair of inventors from the United States, William Dixon and Herman Kassler, invented the mutoscope. It was something similar, but instead of having a strip of film inside, you had photos that would flip over one another and that created the sensation of movement. So, they made these huge wheels full of photos, and you'd look through it in a way very similar to Thomas Edison's machine. You'd turn a crank, and these photos would keep flipping, 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 and a movie would appear for you. The device was called the mutoscope. Mutare means change and scope to view. So you can see things changing inside, moving. You notice that all these names, they're all different names for the same thing, right? They all mean you see movement. Commercially, they had to keep changing them to avoid copying their colleague. You notice that uh, at this point, people had already mastered animation, right? We already understood very well how this works, but we needed a way to make it longer, right? So that we could watch a little movie, something like that, and that a lot of people could see it. That's where two French inventors, Auguste and Louis Lumière, come in. They previously manufactured photographic equipment, and in 1895, they invented the cinematograph, a machine whose name combines cinema for movement and graph for recording or writing. So it was a machine that recorded movement. And look how brilliant the cinematograph was. You could record movement, so it was a camera that would capture this on film, right? In several little frames, one photo after another, but it could also project that film onto a wall. And then the whole system was complete. The first movie screening took place in Paris at the Grand Café on December 28th, 1895. If you were curious, so was I. The first public film exhibition that people paid to watch was this one. But now that you know all this, let's make our own machine right here. It's a machine that can show image after image using some of the technology we have today. Can't we, in a simpler way, come up with a workaround to show movement in a cool way? Yes, we can. We found someone on the internet who invented the following. By using a record player, you can have the disc spinning. In a way that's very similar to a zoetrope. In fact, she even calls her invention a zoetrope because it's really based on that. On that spinning disc where you looked through small slits to see images in sequence. But instead of drawing the figures, this person had the idea to make a hollow 3D print like this one here, see? We have a real outline here, an actual plastic outline. Then we could have several of these images on top of the disc, like 30 of these images. Then shine a special light that illuminates only one of them. When we spin the disc, it alternates, it switches images. Well. Having several of these images isn't a problem, right? We can print several different ones. In fact, this file we used to print is available for purchase, okay? This person is selling each animation there for eight euros, which is about today, roughly a million dollars, right? At the current exchange rate. But seriously, I paid for this print and I bought two animations there. The middle carousel comes for free because, well, you can't do anything with it if you don't buy the animation. The idea is to have a piece in the middle here that can hold this and form a kind of star, right? You'll have all the things here, all the animations around, and then you put it on top of the disc to play. Once that's ready, we would need to light up just a little section, just a very small strip there. Cause if we light up everything, it'll be a mess. We need to light only one image at a time. 
I've seen machines at the Science Museum that use a stroboscope for this, a light that flashes repeatedly. The problem with that is that it's really hard to film later because when you go to record, the camera takes it frame by frame. The frames don't align with the flashing light, so the recording turns out weird. But this person had a better idea. Use this instead, see? A laser level. We could shine light on a very specific spot and only that spot would be illuminated. Well, I printed everything. I brought the record player and a laser level, but let's see if it works. A batch of prints of these small frames just came out of the oven. You can see there's a slot here and on this slot there's a number. Here it says 31, for example. I don't know if you can read it. It's hard to see, but there are 32 in total. And here's the drawing. Let's put this thing in order now. Let's go. Seeing the loose figures, you know this isn't a joke. So, what do we have here in the middle? There are two pieces that fit together. And then, look, I have slots to fit those drawings. Here at the end, this thing was already designed, see, to go in here. There, done, it's locked in. And look what an interesting question. This one is the first drawing, it's number one. Number two, should I put it here on this side or on that side of number one, right? Which small hole should I use, the one on right or the one on the left? I have to think about the rotation of the disc. The disc will spin in this direction, clockwise. So, I want to see figure one, then figure two, figure three, figure four, figure five. So we've got our answer, right? If it spins like this, I need to put them in this order. Look how beautiful it is. Put together like this, it almost looks like a crown. Let's go, here we have the main part of our structure. How does this go on top of the record player? We have a plate here that's already made to center this, right? We put it here underneath. And it needs to lock in somewhere, there you go. And did it lock in? Oh my god. It's turning but slipping. Yeah, the cup that goes on the record player doesn't exactly fit, it just sits loose on top. I think it'll work the same way because the friction will make it spin just right. For those of you who were born in recent years, oops, this is a record player. It's a device that plays this. This black record contains songs recorded mechanically, as we've explained in other videos. The cool part is it spins at a constant speed. Perfect for our experiment, right? And this small plate will fit exactly on top of the record. See? It fits really snug, really perfectly here. And then we put this beautiful structure on top. See, it fits perfectly. Now, theoretically, as soon as I turn this on... Actually, I have to make the record play. Uh... Of course, you can't see anything yet because we don't have the light. That light that's going to make the outline, right? That will light up just one image at a time. Now, I need to confess something. We wanted to test if this projection actually works. So, before I set all this up, we had already put together this other animation of a manta ray. This one we have here is of a couple dancing. I'm going to play the manta ray one first, because I think the couple one is even cooler. So, let's test this one first, then we'll try the other one. In other words, we have two really cool animations. The laser. It has to be positioned. Kind of... Uh oh. Did the battery just die right now? No, it only works if it's perfectly level. I think it's more or less in this position, that's good. Last thing before we start is, what is this laser light that I'm using, right? This is a laser level. It's a little machine that we use to lay tiles, to draw something on the wall, to hang a picture, etc. It displays one horizontal and one vertical line, so if you're laying tiles, you know exactly where to place them. We're going to use the line that's projected vertically, okay? So, you can see the manta ray here, right? This corner lights up first, then the whole disc lights up as it spins, and then it stops and another one starts, it stops, and another one starts, and it sweeps going vertically, image by image. Don't forget to give a thumbs up below after, all right?
This is really beautiful to watch. You could stare at this thing for hours and hours and hours. It's amazing. And I keep imagining this back in 1830 something when they invented the first animation instruments. How did people see this kind of thing? Even today, with all we have, it's still fascinating. Imagine nearly 200 years ago. Let's change the film now. Woo! If this doesn't deserve a thumbs up, I don't know what does. I noticed some of these had their designs taller than others. And I just happen to have a laser level here so I can go through each one and align them using the level. I'll leave these videos as a suggestion where we discuss those early cinema machines. And we also have other videos where we show some tricks like how they used to make ghosts back in the day. There's a really cool playlist to check out. Yeah.